The life of Dr. Satish Kumar is an outstanding <coughs> example of the transformation of a Jain monk into a dedicated, constructive worker of the Gandhian tradition as a result of the inspiration he obtained from Gandhiji's experiments with truth. Inspired with the example of the great British philosopher Bertrand Russell, who was arrested and put in jail because he was protesting against nuclear weapons. Satis set off on a pilgrimage of peace on foot without any money from the Gandhi Samadhi in Rajghat, New Delhi in 1962 to walk to Moscow, Paris, London and Washington, the four major nuclear capitals, to protest against the bomb and to campaign for disarmament. During the course of this remarkable pilgrimage of 8,000 miles, he met ordinary people and also world leaders like Bertrand Russell and Martin Luther King. The response accorded to him was overwhelming. In the last 30 years, being away from my homeland, from my mother country, my beloved land, I still feel that India of imagination, India of heart, is always with me wherever I am. I am always in India, wherever I am, because I carry India in my heart and in my spirit. And now, at this moment, I feel that perhaps the message of Mahatma Gandhi, particularly the message of nonviolence, is more relevant now than ever before particularly since September 11. I've never seen anything like it before. And at that moment, I mean, a man of peace who walked around the world for 8,000 miles for nonviolence, for peace, working with Vinoba, working with Gandhi, I mean, working in Gandhian movement, and standing there, seeing this volcanic fire shattering the confidence of American people gave me realization that this, always there is some blessing in disguise, always there is some silver lining, some good may come out of this evil act. And I thought that perhaps the world will realize that violence from any quarter is violence. And sometimes we call this party evil, or that party evil, or this terrorist, or that terrorist, or whatever quarter it comes from. Mahatma Gandhi was killed by violence. And I started my pilgrimage of 8,000 miles for peace from the grave of Mahatma Gandhi. And so my work for the last 30 years, and at this moment, particularly, I feel that Sometimes we in India, prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. We in India perhaps forget Mahatma Gandhi. We say, oh, Mahatma Gandhi, too old-fashioned, too backward. What is village India? We want to create new yoke in India. Who, what, we don't want to live in villages. But with this event, I feel that we need to choose an alternative. And that alternative is a new non-violent world order. Ultimate security is peace. There is no other security than a peaceful, non-violent world. And therefore, the United Nations will establish not just security council, but also a peace council. And I would like to also say that every government trains its military force. It has military academies. If we are truly Gandhians, in India. Is there Indian government supporting any peace academy? None. Britain, Sandhurst, many other academies, military training military, and all those weaponries. Any peace academy? None. United States, any peace academy? None. Not a single government in the world trains people in peacemaking, peace negotiating, conflict resolution, not one government. And the order of our security. Mahatma Gandhi's 
message through me is let us spend 5% of defense budget in every country and spend that on peace academies to train people how to resolve conflicts through non-violent means. And this way, perhaps Pentagon's quarter, which was hit by the, this, this violent, horrific act, perhaps that quarter could be dedicated for a peace academy. And maybe the World Trade Center, which was hit and destroyed, a new park, and maybe new symbol could be created, which will be a peace park. And so my feeling is that we need Gandhi more than ever now, in this time of crisis, because violence will create more violence. Terrorism or, or any other. Of course, governments have to take responsibility. They have to respond to injustice and self-defense. All that is understandable. But parallel to those actions, whatever actions governments take, and I cannot guide them in those actions, but parallel to those actions, in long-term thinking, we need to create alternative, parallel institutions which work for peace and non-violence so that we don't depend entirely on military power and weapons because that the futility of weapons was proved on 11th of September that not nuclear weapons, not B-52, not any weapons can give security to the richest and the most powerful and the most militaristic country in the world Milit powerful military in the world, that is the United States of America. If they cannot be secured uh, with and billions and billions of dollars were spent on military, on armaments, on uh, in uh, intelligence, the CIA, FBI, all that, there's no lack of money there, there's no lack of uh, budget there, and there's no lack of technology there, there's no lack of, of science there, and yet that confidence, that security is broken, is shattered. And therefore, perhaps we can choose the path of nonviolence. And let's make a few steps. It's better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Thank you.